Hi, everyone. Welcome to our weekly tune-up for everybody on the planet Earth. Uh, we're going to send some beautiful blessings out. And um, the big thing that I feel really supports us is to sit in gratitude for a moment. So there are so many things to be grateful for. Uh, simple things like I have a computer in front of me. I have a bunch of people supporting me while I do this work. So grateful to all of you, grateful to the internet, <laughs> having electricity and grateful that my body's still holding up at this point in my life. And I'm grateful we get to do this work together. So take a deep breath and just feel into what you're grateful for too. And just going to breathe. I just wanted to give you a little update on nitric oxide breathing. You know, where you breathe in, hold it for four seconds, breathe in again, hold it for four seconds. And if you can do it a third time, breathe in, hold it for four seconds. I find that, you know, this is week, I think week uh, three or two that I've been doing it. I can't remember. And the improvement in my lungs is tremendous, especially as the humidity comes into um, my city, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Uh, the, the air is getting hotter and heavier. And usually that's when you get more and more uh, asthma. And yeah, so I cut my colon meridian. So lung colon, these are, you know, the 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 lung comes in this way lung colon uh, is linked to the the colon and i cut that meridian which also helped a lot to um don't do that by the way but sometimes the body needs to do it so that we we can breathe better or have our colon move a little bit better all right so what we did today was tune into the group and each member of the group uh, became an attribute. So for this work that we're going to do today, we have one particular gal who's going to be our observer, as all of you are out there. You're the observer. We're all observing at the same time. And that's really important. When we observe something, it changes, right? I, I like to emphasize, emphasize this a lot, that if you see something, then you're going to uh, be able to see the the change, the shift. It's like when you go to school and you learn something new in mathematics and you see the formula, oh, all of a sudden you know it. When you when you read something, when you when you um, see a new place in the world, once you see it, you basically can't unsee it. And it shifts a lot of things within you and your interrelationships. So let's really focus on the observer because each and every one of us are the observer. And I'm just going to tap that in. Now, before John Veltheim died, I got a session with him. And, you know, he looked at me and he says, oh, come on, Terry Ann, why are you tapping? So if you think for a moment, why am I tapping? I'm only tapping for you guys. I don't tap for myself. And I don't necessarily tap for my clients if they can't see me. I tap only for the individuals. When I'm tapping now, it's for you to understand that we're doing something because we're actually not doing anything. So it, it helps you out. But for those of us who are really experienced, you might notice body talkers don't necessarily tap because we don't have to. We don't have to. And I notice there are a lot of body talkers that are always tapping with me. And I'm like, wow, that's so strange. I understand my clients will tap, but why do we tap? I don't, I don't know. So John was, he was making fun of me for tapping. And I was like, well, to honor your system. But he was like, you don't need to tap. You know, you do it in your head. I'm like, of course. So um, that's just to reinforce this idea of observation. This idea of observation. If I'm just energetically observing that I'm turning on my brain, um, it, you know, I've done it thousands or hundreds of thousands of times where I've tapped the suicides of my brain. My body mind knows how to do this, and so will your practitioner. If somebody doesn't actually tap, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not like Reiki. Uh, in Reiki, 
you have to have your hands in this shape. When you see somebody giving Reiki like this, you know they're not really doing Reiki. So in body talk, it's okay. It's okay. This is all energy medicine. It's really important that we understand this because it is observation. That's all we do here. So when people say, what are you doing? And, you know, oh, wow. It's all observation. Okay. <clears throat> so with that in mind, the observers are all of us, all of you. The second one is we've got someone here who's representing fear, representing fear, all of our fears. So we're going to use that that person and observe that fear, hold that fear so that we can release it from our daily lives, from our bodies. We're not making fear go away. It's not supposed to go away. It's part of our, our nature, our natural being. Otherwise, if we weren't afraid at all, we'd do very dangerous things, <clears throat> uh, even though sometimes we do anyway. Um, this fear is to establish and ground the fear that's really good for us. It's really healthy. Right? So if I'm about to walk into traffic and I see a car coming, I'm going to get some fear and that's going to pull me away from the traffic and the car. Yes. But we don't want the excess fear that drives us. That's what we're going to move out of the system. <clears throat> So already I'm feeling some synthesis going on in the lungs as I'm working through this fear. It's got to go through the lungs, go out the body. It's going to come from all different areas, even if it's coming from, you know, the things you think about. And we've got... Fear that can come from two different things. And we've got two different people representing this. One is being pushed and one is pushiness. And this is going on all the time. And of course, the body becomes afraid when it experiences the pushiness and being pushed, right? Now, we have a moment in life where there's an emergency and we need to push through it. Okay. Yes, like, let's say I get a cold, I'm feeling really sick, you know, basically on death's door, that kind of cold. And then, you know, my child has that kind of cold. I might really have to push through so I could take care of my child as well. I might have to push through. But that's a very limited period of time that we do that. And then the body comes down and we we heal everything. But there, but... There are times when we're pushing through too many things, too many things going on. Now, I've said this over and over again, our electronics does it to us in incredible ways. Now, some might feel it and some don't. Now, all of us have a different nervous system, meaning a different level of sensitivity in our nervous systems. Okay, so some people are able to take a lot. Some people are able to you know, talk a lot, talk about mundane things, tell, you know, really, really, really long stories and go on and on and on. Um, and, and then go to the next story and the next story and the next story. They probably have either a nervous system that's a lot more capable of dealing with all those things, right? They can, they can get through it. Mine can't. Mine shuts down. I can do a little bit of talking, like I'm doing it now for this half hour. And after this half hour, I will probably, you know, start to collapse, even though I have a few people to speak to, uh, you know, right away, my energy goes right down. Now, there's nothing good or bad about this. There's nothing right or wrong about this. It's understanding the differences in your nervous system. So we're going to balance this idea of pushiness being pushed. So, so many things uh, ex are in this pushy place. So many, so many things, even just the phone, even just the ping, ping, ping. I don't know if you keep your phone on, I don't keep my phone on, but you know, you'll see a light or something 
usually I miss it and people, but then people get really aggravated with me that I didn't notice that the phone, you know, that there's a message or whatnot. So, you know, I check it quite often. Uh, but there are times where I don't check it at all. And I tell you, I could go for a week or a month without checking it. So phone, there's Wi-Fi, there's all the Wi-Fi energy, there's EMF, all those things that pressure. God, I just said EMF and my whole body just wanted to pass out. Uh, so EMF's a big deal. Uh, and don't forget, I'm real, right here right now. There's a lot of electronics in front of me, you know, two massive screens. Um, there's a phone in the corner. There's earphones, there's microphones, there's the, you know, huge computer base. So, um, you know, all those kinds of things will interfere. Those can be very, very pushy as well. And not only what messages you have or what emails you have, then there's your life. Then there's your own body needs you. Yes. Okay, so let's work with um, the feminine masculine. So I am actually the feminine unconscious energy in this, in this work we're doing today. And someone else is the masculine protective energy. So I'm just tuning into those two. And we're going to bring the masculine and feminine into balance. We're bringing it via the central nervous system and the kundalini to help better discern, that's your small intestine in your heart, uh, what, when and where you need to push. And uh, it should be very little. There's like Nizagadatta Maharaj said, there's no need to push life about and we're part of life. So there's no need to do that. But there are emergency moments that are pushy, okay, but they should not last more than that quick urgency. They shouldn't last. They should be very, very quick. And take a deep breath. Wow, this is really um, just pulling on my energy. I think maybe I'm supposed to go uh, unconscious for a moment, so... I'm really going to go into the feminine, which means I'm not even going to speak. And I'm going to do the rest of the session from there. Okay, the session is done. Um, that last part was um, a detoxification of the consciousness, including active memory, along with any type of, um, you know, the be chem that goes with it, meaning toxicity or whatever's in the physiology. Um, yeah, there's a bit of nausea going on now, which means that the small intestine is definitely trying to uh, discard those things that have been part and parcel of uh, habitual uh, patterns of pushiness, whether being pushed, whether pushing your, I mean, obviously we're using two people as this pushiness, but, you know, this is within the individual. Uh, we can perceive someone pushing us, um, but that doesn't mean they are. It doesn't, it's usually, I mean, we do have to deal with other people and tell them to stop or mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that or uh, no, I don't have time to do that. We have to be very clear. And that's that's the small intestine that's going to help you uh, be clear. But we want to refine that. It's going to take a while. So yeah, there you go. Um, enjoy. Hopefully uh, this is going to be a simple session, but I have a feeling we're going to have to work through it for a few weeks it feels like it could be a month long so we'll do a bit more next week just send your your ideas or sensations or feedback that you received and we'll we'll look at that thank you bye